Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host, Mark Fusco. Got another wine review for you today. Uh, this is another sleeper. I forgot we had another sleeper that uh, the, uh, the guy at HEB uh, suggested. And I remember looking at this bottle and it said seller number eight. And me and the number eight got this great relationship going on. Um, so it looked pretty cool and I was like, yeah, okay. Because, you know, it's a cab and cabs are cabs and, you know, everybody loves Cabernet Sauvignon. They're good. I just have a preference for other red varietals like Merlots and Syrahs and Zinfandels especially. But um, but then he's, he mentioned it and I was like, okay, so it's, it's a recommendation. So uh, let's uh, let's go and check it out. Oh, i got to get my notes out. <clears throat> By the way, yeah, I already had it, the 3.0, because I'm leet. Anyway, um, so here's the label. All right, so it's seller number eight, um, Cabernet Sauvignon 2007 from California. Uh, so it's, it's, as always, if it's, it just says the state for the Appalachian, because that's all it says, it means the juice can come from anywhere in the state. Um, and it's eight dollars and nine cents HEV plus. All right, so let's see how this is going to fare. Have you seen uh, Sommelier School yet? You need to. So I'm getting like some some different types of chocolate and some 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 fruit here, some berries. Yeah, like some chocolate covered berries. And I don't know, some type of potpourri. Or like it lingers in my nose and I breathe in my nose and it's like a potpourri type of um, aroma to it that it's kind of like uh, going into pier one. That's what I'm getting, like a pier one type of thing. But not when I stick my nose all the way in the glass, so a little bit different there. So let's see what we've got on the, uh, on the flavor profile. So yeah, I keep I keep getting that Pier One import spicy, like that spicy hot, like pepper spicy, but spices, like a spice rack. Um, uh, definitely some some milkiness, some chocolate. Um, I mean, th these are oak, uh, these are barrel aged Cabernets, or this is a barrel aged Cabernet, so you're gonna get some oak in there. Um, So yeah, it's uh, get some creaminess to it, and I get this like like a spice rack type of impression, like like I am I'm in pure one. I just it just keeps sticking in my head, and that's that's what I get off the top of my head. Um, tannins are, are okay. I mean it's a 2007, so it's still fairly young, but the tannins aren't overpowering everything. You get a little bit of dryness. Um, the fact that I, I said I don't really like Cabernet as much, I like this one. I like this one a lot, actually. Um, I did, when I did my little bit of research on this, um, I was trying to find a rating because I, I want to see what you know what kind of ratings people are giving. I couldn't find one for 2007. I found one for 2006 on Corked. Um, no review or anything, just a number. They gave it a 91. I don't think I'd give it a 91, but I'd probably give it... Oh, heck, for my love of eights, we'll give it an 88. I probably should give it an 89, but 
I don't think it's quite an 89, but I'll give it an 88 for seller number 8 from Mars 8. Anyway, um, I'm going to try this again. There we go. Peppers. I love when I get that that third or fourth taste. I get that pepper component. Yeah, that jalapeno type pepper thing. Right at the end. That's exactly what I talked about yesterday or for lesson two of sommelier school, how wines open up. I've had this bottle open for about an hour and a half, almost two hours. And, you know, it's, 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 that's the surface area of, of the oxygen hitting it. So it doesn't have much. You get in the glass, you swirl it around, and the wine starts opening up. I can see this opening up even more. And uh, I may add another point to that. We'll give it an 89 because it's starting to get better. So make it an 89. Uh, so let's talk about seller number eight. Um, this it's, it's the original name is the Asti. Oh, actually, the original name was the uh, Italian Swiss Colony, uh, called the Ast the Asti Winery. Now, these are Italian and Swiss immigrants came over uh, in the late 1800s. Uh, the winery was established by a person named of Andrea Sabar uh, Sabarboro um, in 1881. Uh, this winery is located north of Sonoma County in a town or near a town called, I think it's covered in probably Cloverdale. I typed Coverdale, but it's probably Cloverdale. Um, and the actual cellar, there's an actual cellar number eight. So it's not just some fictitious thing. I mean, it's the real deal. Um, it went through some different ownership changes but uh, over the years, but right now it's actually owned by Foster's, believe it or not. Yeah, Foster's as in Australian for beer. That company, um, and at one point in time, the, the, from a little bit of research I was able to do, this seller number eight or seller number eight was supposedly, and I may be right, may be wrong, I don't know, but supposedly was the second most popular destination in California after Disneyland. Really, like not like the Golden Gate Bridge, you know, didn't like edge it out. Maybe it did, but. Apparently, at one time, it was the second most popular destination. Um, there's a bit of a, a little bit of an article on, on a website talking about how they just reopened, I guess, the winery, the cellar itself, to the public for wine tastings and all that. I, I think it's pretty good. Um, let's see what the back. I didn't, I didn't even read the back label here, to be honest. Uh, Immigrants, Cabernet, da 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 da. All right, so let's see. Hmm, cellar number eight makes only red wines. Okay, Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, and Zinfandel. Which deliver rich flavors, cigar, spice, leather, earth, and chocolate. <laughs> I hope you didn't hear that. Um, <laughs> I I will not go into what just happened in the background, okay? Um, so I got the spice and I got the chocolate. So there must be the others must be the other uh, you know, must be the other stuff, but um, it's pretty good. I'll I'll, I'll take it. And you know what? It, it's 13.9 alcohol, and uh, if it's very precise with the alcohol, usually it's pretty close to being exactly what it says. If it says 13.5 or 14, they're kind of allowing a little fudge factor there for the one, one to one and a half, but um, it's probably right at 13.9. I didn't really get any alcohol sensation at all. Um, like I promised, uh, I, over the weekend, I read uh, this book, Taste, by uh, um, Anthony Trollato, and excellent book. I highly recommend it. It's going to get added to the library of, of must-reads because everything on that library is a must-read. Um, I'm going to add that this guy, I mean, <laughs> he did transform a lot of the wine industry. Uh, he was very instrumental uh, in doing a lot of stuff. And the, the Probably one of his biz, biggest claims to fame is he's the guy that brought over Santa Margarita Pinot Grigio to the United States and made it a national brand. Um, he was, you know, importer, uh, distributor, all that kind of stuff. So, great story. Um, it'd be great to meet this guy sometime. I wish I'd known about this guy back when I lived in Chicago, because that's where he's living for most, most of the time. So, uh, thank you, Donna, my friend Donna in Chicago, for 
buying this book for me um, and sh shipping it down to San Antonio for me. Great book. Uh, what else? Sommelier School episode number or lesson number two is up. Uh, the Art of Tasting Wine. Only on the website. So you have to go to the website to watch it. So if you're watching the podcast, uh, you can't see it via iTunes. But you can go to the website and watch it. If you're on the website or if you're on the podcast, come to the website. Friend me up. Twitter. Facebook. Uh, send me an email for anything. Um, of course, as usual with the sales, was going to come out. Click the ads. Uh Buy stuff. Definitely recommend this book. The book's off the sommelier school, especially the Wine for Dummies and the uh, Windows on the World Wine course. If you're gonna, if you can't can't get a lot of books, get those two. If you gotta get one, I say get the Wine for Dummies book first, and probably because that's what I got first, uh, because it, it kind of explains things. Of, you know, in a, not not that not that Windows on the World uh, doesn't explain things great, but. It's, it's meant for, like, the new person trying to figure out about wine. Uh, wine for Dummies is. But uh, those two books, definitely buy those. And, yeah, exactly. I'm legit. Too legit, right? Uh, too, right? So, um, I think that's going to be it. Tomorrow we'll get another great episode. Uh, probably another HEB Plus wine. I haven't figured out what we're going to do next. But, uh uh, we got some other wines yesterday, so I'm excited about some of the stuff. So we got, for the next couple of weeks, I got a lot of great wines, stuff I'm excited about. The labels look really good as far as marketing is concerned. So uh, stay tuned. Come on back. Tell all your friends so we can get a lot of viewers. And uh, as always, thanks for stopping by or thanks for stopping in. And we'll see everybody again next time.